There are some of the world's most in-demand tech jobs. These are synthetic IDs as good as a genuine ID. I didn't understand the, you know, the, the, the phrase. It took of... it literally. Oh, it even read my handwriting. Is this what people mean when they say that AI is going to take our jobs? But what does a day in one of these roles actually look like? From fighting scams and fraud, developing large language models from scratch, to designing chatbots, they're all working with one technology, AI. This is Most Wanted. I'm going to show you some cool stuff, Nessa. Yeah, that's absolutely cool. That's a, that's a mask of your face. <laughs> yeah, it's an exact replica of how I, how I look like. Rajat Maheshwari is part of the Cyber and Intelligence Solutions team at Mastercard. In his role, his team develops tools to manage customer risk and prevent scams. Part of his role involves getting in the mind of potential fraudsters by creating fake identities. So these are synthetic IDs as good as a genuine ID. You can have these identities, you can have right. the face mask, you can have the fingerprint yeah. and then uh, you are essentially uh, replicating someone right. else. That person can do anything with these. Right. This was done by a Japanese artist who did the mask for James Cameron movie Avatar. Sometimes we have to think like bad actors to uh, come up with the solution which yeah. can stop these things. You have seen that the world has evolved from these masks and now we, we, the deep fakes are coming in. The intent was not to break the technology but yeah. the intent was to help uh, uh, the solution providers to enhance the level so that they can stand against these kind of attacks as well. Wow, what did we have right, here? Yes, please, please, please have a seat. Over at Amazon Web Services, Joel Garcia and his team have made a game out of simulating real-world security conditions as well, which they hope will help clients improve their incident response processes. Well, what we have here is a project called Chaos Kitty. Why Kitty? Well, I have cats at home who always destroys my furniture. Oh yes, agents <laughs> of chaos, yeah, for sure. Yeah. What exactly is chaos engineering? We're going to intentionally inject some failure mm -hmm. so that we can learn. You can see that there's many colorful lights mm -hmm. and all these bricks that we use to kind of represent what we have in our AWS cloud. When it's red, something is wrong with the security configuration and when it's green, it's all good, all compliant. What we added on, uh, a Gen AI mm -hmm. assistant here. What we have here is a typical, you know, company security policy. Typically, without a Gen AI assistant, you know, mm. they would have to look through, study mm. this policy document mm. uh, very deeply, right? We have fed this document in uh, along with the Gen AI uh, assistant, mm. so it knows all this information. I could go in there and ask questions. It's going to give me some best practices. Alexa, fix chaos, Kitty. Remediating chaos, Kitty environment. You'd be able to leverage AI and Gen AI to actually help fix uh, the challenges, and then they'd be they'd be more focused on the other areas that could be improved. To be able to converse naturally with an AI chatbot, a large language model or LLM is needed. LLMs are AI models pre-trained on vast amounts of data, which can understand and generate human language responses. Popular models include ChatGPT4 and Gemini. The generative AI market is expected to grow over a trillion dollars in the next decade. The team in Singapore is developing a large language model that's catering to Southeast Asian languages. Leong Weiti speaks 14 languages fluently and he's an AI engineer and linguist involved in developing the Sea Lion model. We're going to look at an example about informal Indonesian. We're essentially asking the model our friend is sort of, because of his work, he, he's just sort of panicking, you know, and he's working very hard every day. How can we help him best manage his work? Yeah, but in, the, in that context, they're saying, they're using an idiom, right? Exactly. And they're saying that um, his beard is always on fire. Exactly. So, so, so that idiom um, might not be so um, understandable to certain models, right? So let's see how they, they deal with this. For this demo, we have um, four panels mm -hmm. and each of them corresponds to one language model. Mm -hmm. So on the left, we have Sea Lion, our model, okay. and we have three other models on the right. Um, we can see that it, it didn't understand the, you know, the, the, the phrase. It took of, it literally, basically. Exactly. Like it's thinking about setting someone on fire. Oh no, it's also in the same tone. Exactly. It's casual, informal, it's still colloquial, whereas this one is still sticking to like a more formal yes, kind of response. Exactly. And, and, and that's really what we want to achieve as well. Now 
we are seeing that some of these models out there, they are not able to sort of handle multicultural contexts. Um, and, and that's sort of understandable because um, they're building those models for a particular audience. Right? For us in Southeast Asia, we need to operate within this region, handling our languages and cultures. So this is why we decided to build Sea Lion. Vincent O oh works as a Senior Specialist Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services and his projects involve leveraging generative AI based on human prompts to create personalised experiences. StoryGen was a project that we did with the National Library Board of the entire Singapore mm -hmm. where we wanted to reinvent the future of the libraries. We use generative AI mm -hmm. uh, and AWS technology mm -hmm. to create an experience whereby young children and adults they can put in a series of inputs, uh, mm -hmm. the selection, and a brand new book will be created on the spot for them. What you call the prompts, mm -hmm. right, that you're actually sending back to the uh, large language model. This is just the very beginning of the art of the possible and it's going to be amazing how people will leverage Gen AI to unleash their extended level of creativity. Part of those new jobs that are created as part of AI is, uh, is a role or uh, a skill set which is actually prompt engineering, which didn't exist before. And um, when you look at prompt engineering, you don't, necessarily, you don't need to be technical, you just need to understand um, how to put those prompts as you would, for example, like a, a detailed search, mm. uh, to maximize and leverage the power of a large language model. There is a growing demand for AI specialists, and here at AI Singapore, the rest of Wei Ti's team, hailing from all over Southeast Asia, including Vietnam, the Philippines, and Thailand, are working on making Sea Lion more inclusive. You are the one who brought everyone into this team. More or less, more or less. My dream is eventually we have everybody you know, from all the countries in Southeast Asia being represented here. AI Singapore's apprenticeship program aims to grow the pool locally, even those considering mid-career switches. In fact, some of the Sea Lion team graduated as AI apprentices after switching disciplines, such as Tai, who studied finance, and Wei Ti, who was previously a pharmacist. We're not really alone in trying to tackle low-resource mm. languages. Ultimately, all the stuff that we do is fully open source as well, yeah. and it's really shared with the public in general so that everyone can benefit. Everyone is working on uh, different aspects of the large language model. We get to learn um, mm. about it with each other. It does feel a bit like mini ASEAN. So. A mini ASEAN, yeah. <laughs> There is so much to do in this field. Yeah. yeah, and AI, you know, is one of those industries where you can make a mid-career switch. And absolutely, time. absolutely. And um, I'm a good example, Nessa. Rajat started his career in the mobile and semiconductor industry and made the switch over to AI in 2014. I have seen that journey in past uh, 20 years or so where AI has really flourished, Asia and it's becoming uh, an inherent part of our lives. When you ask people to use digital ecosystem, there are side effects. According to the Global Anti-Scam Alliance, more than $1 trillion are lost to scams every year, affecting 2 billion victims. Rajat's work at Mastercard includes working with banks and governments to apply intelligent AI systems to predict whether scams are taking place. Let's take the example that uh, you giving me $100, uh, Nessa, looks a perfectly legitimate transaction. Yeah. But 1,000 more people giving me $100 in a, mm. in a day, something that, that is will, suspicious. That you know, sound alarm bells. Exactly. We train the models mm. to detect the behavior, to detect the patterns, and then do the risk assessment and save uh, you being sending money to me. Welcome to the MasterCard Experience Center. Whenever a person taps the card, our AI models kicks in, then we give a risk assessment to the issuing institution that yes. what do we feel about this transaction. You can see the screen here showing that the transactions are getting declined. Where do you see the state of AI in the next couple of years? The integration with the LLMs. So that's LLM is essentially the large language models. Large language models form a big part of the user experience solutions that Joe works on for AWS. Take reading invoices, for example. If you want to like, introduce something else into your business, a new form, a new process, then you'll have to reevaluate the technology or refactor that in. With Gen AI, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because of the large language model, it uh, can actually parse these. Parsing refers to the process of breaking down a user's input into smaller pieces and analyzing each piece to determine its meaning. I'd like to know um, if there is a proper signatory. 
oh, it even read my handwriting, so it knows that it's my terrible handwriting, that it's Michael Garcia. Did you see yourself ending up where you are today? Even at a young age, I knew that in some form way or um, that I was going to be involved with technology. What did you start out studying? I graduated computer science. I went through a variety of jobs. I even founded a company before startups were fashionable. Today, with AI, when you're thinking about redefining experiences, you're not going to get to it on the first. Mm -hmm. This is like super long shot ambition, right? You know that Southeast Asia is not uh, 10 languages only. There are like hundreds of dialects, Balinese, Javanese, you know, Visayan. Mm -hmm. so, so we hope to get those represented as well eventually. Mm -hmm. How soon can we get there? Our hope is that it will trigger similar movements across the region. Outside of Southeast Asia, the interest is also very strong, right? We have similar situation in India, we have similar situation in Africa where there's a bit of underrepresentation. If I'm able to save someone's lifelong savings, I mean, it's itself uh, that makes my day. Is this what people mean when they say that AI is going to take our jobs? It's going to make something more efficient so that people can actually concentrate on what matters more either for the business or for customers.